You know, a lot of guys mention, you know, the cup regulars, but I think they might be overlooking the guy who's sitting on the pole. Timothy Peters could be pretty good. Obviously, he's got a great car as we take a look at our race format. Yeah, this race tonight is basically based off good short track racing all around the country. The field is set by heat races not qualifying, and that's how we determine where they start and how many cars are in the race. Let's find out who we should watch tonight. Let's go back to Kelly Stavis. sponsor to Liberty University that's where he goes to school yeah and that's uh, William Barnes actually driving one of uh, Junior's late model cars so that's uh, that's a car run out of Junior shop want to take a look at our starting grid as I mentioned before Timothy Peters will start on the pole he's got eight truck wins to his resume he was 27th in last year's event and Denny Hamlin tonight's host uh, you would think the host would get a better starting spot than inside <laughs> of row three maybe the pole for him Starting outside row six, C.E. Falk, a former winner of the Denny Hamlin Showdown. And outside row eight, Dalton Sargent, a young up-and-comer in the K&N Series with a race win and the points lead under his belt. Yeah, he's been busy racing both the East and the West Series. He has. You see inside row 11, Kaz Grawl. He's actually filling in for Kyle Busch in this race. This is the Kyle Busch late model there. How about Jeb Burton back there in row 14, the family being well represented? Jeb already has a win in the Camping World Truck Series. You can see uh, back here toward the back, Curtis Markham. Uh, he, a lot of people don't know, he was a great late model racer, uh, and now he serves as a spotter in the Cup Series. And, of course, he spots for Denny Hamlin, so that helps him out a little bit. I think that's probably the best way to get the invite. <laughs> <laughs> We're two by two. Up in front, it's Timothy Peters and Peyton Sellers bringing him to the green flag. Great battle for the lead. Timothy Peters in the 17 on the inside. Peyton Sellers on the outside. Looks like he'll slide in behind and take that second spot. And yeah, certainly the inside line here is the preferred line, but I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, we're going to see some guys make some moves on the outside because you can see these guys. They're going to actually run below the line in the corner. That leaves the lane on the outside. They can't go too deep in the corner with the wall right there. Timothy Peters. Out in front, Peyton Sellers running in the second spot. They're two by two for position back behind them, though. Such an impressive field of late models. You know, when you go to a Saturday night track like South Boston, you're normal seeing 18, 20, 22 late models. To see 36 line up and, and drop the green on this little short track, it's, it's busy for sure. Peyton Ryan on the inside of the 10 of Nick Smith. Those two still haven't settled at four position. Oh, Nick Smith got into the wall a little bit, then bounced back into the 23 of Peyton Ryan. And while all that was happening, we have a melee. The 41 of Brayton Hawes has a lot of damage to the right side of that car. It doesn't look good, does it? There's yeah, just 15 years old, too, out of Youngsville, North Carolina. I think we see the result of where the damage came from. Looks like the uh, 21 of Travis Swain must have made contact. Also, the 4... Jeb Burton involved in this incident. You see Travis's car. He's going to be done for the night. You uh, see that right front. It's towed out a mile, and it's bouncing up and down. That car's got, uh, got severe damage. So Travis Swain will take it behind the wall. Take another look at what happened. That, again, is the 10 of Nick Smith bouncing off the wall and into the 23 of Peyton Ryan. And then on the back stretch. Jeb Burton involved in this, in the four, also the 41 of Brayton Hawes, the hood coming off of that car. Yeah, you can almost assume that people started slowing up. You know, they saw something happening up front. They started lifting, and guys behind them didn't get lifted. And I, I, you can about guarantee that's what happened. Chad Fincham also with some damage to the front end of the number 19. It's not unusual in this race to see cautions early in the race. You know, everybody's hyped up, excited. It's a Denny Hamlin race. It's a big deal. They know it's televised. It's not unusual. We see a lot of early race cautions in these races. And I'm guessing it's short track racing. Even though it is for charity, guys still want to get up front. They still want to win this event. Stay with us. We'll be back. And welcome back to South Boston Speedway and the Denny Hamlin Short Track Showdown. 
guy whose name is on this race, already out of the race with engine issues. He's standing by with Kelly Savage. Disappointing way to end the night for Denny Hamlin. Obviously, there was an issue under the hood. What exactly was going on? Yeah, something broke in the valve train. Not sure what it was, but um, could uh, could come from the miss shift that I had earlier in the day. It, who knows? But uh, definitely unfortunate. I felt like we had a car in the long run that could really run with these guys, but uh, just wasn't meant to be from the first lap. We just started going backwards. I, I, as a driver, I think we should throw Denny out of the Drivers Association. You can't admit you made a mistake. I mean, that's unheard of. Wait a minute. There's an association for you guys? Informally, there's an association. <laughs> We're two by two as we get ready for the restart. On the inside, it's Timothy Peters in the 17 and Lee Pulliam in the five on the outside. Pace car makes its way back onto pit road and green flag back in the air. We're back underway. Preferred line working once again for Timothy Peters on the inside. Lee Pulliam in the five stuck on the outside trying to get back in. It's just so hard, so hard to get the car to roll the middle like you need in that top lane. You almost have to give up the entry, get the car turned, and try to get a straight shot off. And these three guys in the front, they do battle here quite often. I mean, these are the three of the guys that if you're going to race the South Boston Speedway, you have to beat. So they know the way Whoa. around. Matt Waltz in the zero goes around. It was contact right on the front stretch. Caution comes out again. And we see damage even farther back in the pack. That's what happens when an accident happens at a short track like this. Everybody stacks up. I know Matt Waltz isn't happy with this finish to his night, but that's what happens when you run side by side. The guy on the bottom is searching for rear traction. It looks like he just shoves up into the guy on the outside, turns himself into the inside wall. Yeah, and these cars don't have a tremendous amount of power, so if you're going to pass somebody, you got to be wide open. I mean, you got to be in the gas. Here's Juan Garcia. He has issues as well. But you can't be waiting on the throttle. you got to jump wide open in the gas, and when you do that, you're committed and that's when these problems happen. Take another look. Coming off of turn four, around goes Waltz into the wall, and it looks as though his night will be over as well. Yeah, you see here, you just run out of real estate. He's trying to get into the power, trying to get into the power, and it pushes up into the outside car, who wasn't giving him any room, which he shouldn't. He needs to pin that guy on the bottom, and, and that's the result of it. You lose rear traction, you make some contact with the front, it turns your car left, and these straightaways are so narrow, there's just nowhere to go. There's Matt Waltz out of the zero. So again, his night has ended. He won't end up in victory lane, which everyone is still hoping to find victory lane after this event. Yeah, you can see the anguish on his face. You know, these guys work on their own cars. You know, they don't have a group of, you know, 500 employees backing them up. And not only that, it's very, very expensive. So when you wreck one of these vehicles, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of money. Steve, as you mentioned, Juan Garcia, he was way back in the back and was trying to check up, but obviously didn't get checked up fast enough. So a lot of damage to the front end of that car. Myatt Snyder in the two currently in the 10th position. He's already passed 10 cars to get up there. He has. That's a great start. You know, start back in 20th as, as cramped quarters as this racetrack is to pick and choose and be patient as he's been to get up into the top 10. That's an impressive run so far. And Myatt, a regular in the late model, so he's feeling comfortable out there on the track. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Denny Hamlin Short Track Showdown. It started off all good for Denny Hamlin, but didn't end the way he wanted it to. Engine Issues has him sidelined and a spectator now. This was not a spectator. No, what an unbelievable job Peyton Sellers does here. He gets a little behind in the steering, but he chases it all the way down the front stretch to spin out in the corner. I know you don't ever want to spin out, but if that happens on the front stretch, it's certainly going to end his night. And recently on lap 124, the big one happens. Coming out of turn number four. Yeah, trouble started in front of these guys, and just a lot of people got in this wreck just not being able to get slowed down. You see a lot of damage. Uh, again, we talked about it earlier. This race means a lot, and people are digging hard. Bruce Anderson in the 73. Local driver out right here in South Boston, Virginia, involved in it, as well as the 71 of Juan Garcia. More damage to that car. Yeah, it's been a rough night for Juan Garcia. I think this one's finally ended his night, though. Eddie Johnson in the 57 also involved we're back rolling again two by two as we get ready for the restart and again the break is going to be coming around lap 150 and at that break they can't do a whole lot 
No, they can change two tires. They can't even add fuel. The fuel capacity had to be set from the beginning of the race for the entire event. So with only being able to change two tires, you know, these guys are managing their tires. Timothy Peters, it's been easy for him to manage his tires. He's been out front most of the night, which interesting you see on this restart, he's chosen the outside. Earlier in the race, we saw him restarting on the inside. So now the outside line is coming in. Jeff, is this a good move? I don't like Lee Pulliam on my inside. He's fast. He, uh, he gets it done a lot here. I'd like him on my outside. We'll find out if it works for Timothy Peters choosing the outside line. Green flag back in the air. It's very important if you're going to restart on the top, you have to clear that guy down the back stretch, and Timothy does a great job. He must know something about the outside and maybe the acceleration rate down the front stretch. You see some tough racing back here for fourth. Holding out of the third spot, the 23 of Peyton Ryan. He's been involved in a few dust-ups earlier today. As you mentioned, the battle now going on for that fourth spot. The 83 of Matt Bowling won this event a year ago. Gets just in front of the 12 of Austin Thaxton. And Austin's driving that thing hard. You can see it sideways off the corner. He never lifted. He just put some wheel in it and kept on going. So he's digging hard on the outside. We talked about it earlier. This racetrack, you can run the outside. I, the inside's the preferred line, but the outside's good enough where you can hang in there and try to find a hole. C.E. Fault, also victorious in this event a couple years back, racing up there in the top five. And these are short track passes you see right here. And what I mean by that is they're not afraid to lean on the guy on the outside. You know, at these speeds, at this size racetrack, it's, you have to use at least a groove or a groove and a half to compete that pass. Aggressive move by Chase Elliott. He's trying to take positions away. Three wide. So they work their way into one and two. Here comes Matt Bowling once again, looking to the inside of Peyton Ryan. Needs to be very careful here on the bottom. We saw earlier in the race how easy it is to lose rear traction to go around. They're doing a great job, though, of minding their lane, racing their race, and not leaning on one another. They're leaning on the 12 degrees of banking here, which isn't a whole lot. Oh, and a little bumping there. Well, just as soon as I say it, Matt Bowling decides it was time to lean on him, trying to move him up the racetrack to complete this pass. Peyton Ryan trying to stay out in front of Matt Bowling. Bowling all over the left rear quarter panel of Peyton Ryan. And this race right here is for third and fourth. It's not for the lead. But what they're racing for is where are they going to restart after the break? Do you want to be on the inside? Do you want to be on the outside? If you really want the inside, man, you're going to dig hard right here because that's going to position you where you want to be, which ultimately with only 50 laps to go could mean a great deal about giving you a chance to win the race. And Bowling is able to clear the 23. Peyton Ryan. Now Peyton Ryan's right on his back bumper. We're getting ready to see, though, how much better Matt Bowling was as he clears this pass. Does he pull away? Does he gap himself? He's already gapped himself a couple car lengths. A couple more cars side by side, fighting for position. 61 of Dalton Sargent. There's the 91 of William Byron, also trying to make his way back up toward the front. A little bumping there. Byron got underneath the 27 of Tommy Lemons Jr. Sometimes it's what you have to do to make a lane. You know, William Byron, he's driving a junior motorsports late model in this race. He's had a, a great start to his year. He's won a K&N race down at Greenville Pickens, and here he is in the Denny Hamlin Showdown. Fighting for the ninth spot to be in the top 10. Back there with him, Peyton Sellers in the 99. And he's done a good job of picking his way back up through the pack after having that trouble earlier. So he's still in contention to win this race. Hanging on to the position, Tommy Lemons Jr. in the 27, trying to clear William Byron. This event, though, is perfect. This is why I fell in love with racing. You watch these guys battle on this little short track, tight short track, working for the lanes, but racing. They're not moving each other out of the way. They're not spinning each other out. They're running side by side, lap after lap, fighting for position. Yeah, we saw Peyton a little while ago. He tried to make a move on the outside. You don't do that on a short track. You know, that's how aggressive they're being. Definitely aggressive, but passive aggressive early in this one we haven't seen as you mentioned the guys just slamming into the the sides of these cars to get a little extra grip try to take a position away they've been passive aggressive early on yeah but these laps are counting down we're seven or eight laps from the half we're not the halfway break but the break with 50 to go right and from there you only have two tires and 50 laps of racing and that's going to go by very quick great battle here setting up between austin thaxton in the 12 and the 40 of ce falk a little contact made that's that aggression we were referencing. You know, if you feel you're faster, Austin Thaxton feels he's faster. He moves C.E. Falk off the bottom to try to complete this pass. Sparks flying at 88. Josh Berry back behind these two. Austin Thaxton trying to hold on to the position. C.E. Falk still on the outside, trying to make up ground. 
And Austin may have been the most aggressive driver that I've seen tonight. You know, he's really been leaning on guys. He's been racing hard. Uh, you can see this race means a great deal to him. His car's sideways. He's on the inside of people. So uh, he, you're going to see something from him, I think, in his last 50. Chase Elliott back behind that 88 of Josh Berry. Berry now all over the back bumper of C.E. Falk. C.E. Falk must be thinking, what are you guys doing, man? Get off of me. I mean, every time he gets in the corner, somebody's into his quarter panel and his rear bumper. At some point, he's going to get frustrated with that. Well, but what I see, though, is as these cars pass C.E. Falk, they pull away, which tells me that he's holding these guys up. I know he doesn't want to be run into or moved up. We see Peyton Sellers here works inside of Chase Elliott, and that's what happens. As C.E. Falk holds you up, the car behind you makes a move on you. Chase Elliott, with patience, lost that spot to Peyton Sellers. Josh Berry's able to get by. Peyton Sellers now going by. And Sellers got two spots in one corner. I mean, that was a big move for Sellers. Two spots on a short track, that can take a long time under green. So getting those two spots in one corner, that could be a big advantage. A dominant night for Timothy Peters as he stays just in front of Lee Pulliam. We've come to the lap 150 mark. We'll see when the officials throw the caution out for the break. Great battle for the lead, though. These two guys have had some run-ins in the past. They've raced each other really hard for short track wins. Big race at Martinsville, racing at South Boston. They know each other very well, and trust me, they want to beat each other really, really, really badly. Great battle for six going on here. Josh Berry on the outside. To the inside, Peyton Sellers is going to take the spot away. He's definitely moving toward the front. And the caution does come out now for our break. Timothy Peters in front of the field. He has been incredible all night long. He really has. I mean, he started up front. He's kept his track position. He's kept his nose clean. You see here, there's very little damage. I mean, he's led 138 of the 152 laps. That tells me that his car is really handling well. It'll be interesting to see, though, when they put two fresh tires on it with the low fuel load. you got to remember, they can't add fuel to their cars. They can only put two right side tires on it. What are they going to do? Is it going to change how their cars drive with low fuel and newer tires? And that that is a great point, Steve, because these rarely do you ever put tires on without putting fuel in. And when do you put two on without putting fuel in? I mean, it just doesn't happen. So there's not a lot of experience in doing that. So that could really change the way these, the way these cars handle. Makes it even more challenging. Will that change the philosophy that Timothy Peters had on the last restart where he chose the outside line, now with two right side tires, Will he choose the inside again? Well, true to form, I, I said do the opposite, and, <laughs> and I would have been wrong. So I, I think if it worked, you got to do it again. Uh, trust me, as much as this race means, it wouldn't surprise me at all that these guys have put on two tires with no fuel in practice, and they kind of know what to expect. And now we're not talking about pit stops because I want everyone to understand the field is frozen. You can't gain or lose position here. It's a free pit stop. You can install two tires, no fuel, some small chassis adjustments. So that's why we know how the field is going to reset when we go back racing. Notice how this thing started out as a charity event? <laughs> and now, race pretty yeah, quick, and now it? it's a hardcore race. I mean, that's what's so fun about this event. Isn't that what happens when you guys put your helmets on? We, we, uh, we can turn a competition of racing ducks in a pond to, <laughs> to something that's uh, very, very fun to watch. You are right, though, Rick. It's the helmet because something about the helmet strat, I think it cuts off oxygen to their brain. The crew chiefs wear helmets, too. <laughs> <laughs> I have noticed that. We'll be back for the restart in just a moment. And welcome back to South Boston Speedway and the Denny Hamlin Short Track Showdown. A great crowd on hand. The guy actually having to watch the rest of this race is the namesake for this race. Denny Hamlin out early uh, with engine issues, so he's a spectator now. As the cars continue to roll around the track, getting ready for the restart, Timothy Peters out in front. Here's another local guy. He was a, a track champion right here at South Boston. Yeah, he's really good here. Uh, they build their own race cars, do a great job with their program. And again, like I said, I would have picked the outside because it worked before, and there he is on the bottom. Yeah, I think he must feel that either it didn't work as well or he got a little lucky that he cleared him from the outside earlier. Now with those two fresh tires, he's on the inside. He's going to give it a shot from down there. And I think this is all learning. You know, there's 50 to go. You have to assume there's going to be some more restarts. Where do you want to be when it comes to the end of the race? See how Lee Polium does on the outside in the number five. Green flag back in the air. Great restart for Timothy Peters. He clears the five. Lee Pulliam holds on to second. Josh Berry in the 88 on the inside, trying to get by Matt Bowling. I'm telling you, this is an impressive run for Josh Berry. He started back in the 33rd position to work his way all the way up into the top five of this race in 150 laps. That is hard to do on a tight short track. 
Yeah, that's a car that Junior owns. Uh, they run it to Hickory, Hickory Motor Speedway on a regular basis. Uh, that's a really good race team, a really good young driver. Yeah, they're actually the defending track champion. They were the track champion at Hickory last year in this class. Do you do a lot of iRacing, Steve? I do, but apparently not enough because that's how Dale Jr. met some of these drivers he has here. That's how Josh Berry got his ride. So my iRacing experience must not be very good because uh, I wasn't offered a ride. <laughs> he's done that with a lot of the people that he surrounds himself with. He finds them on iRacing and then hires them and brings them to help him out. You know, and it's more than just that. What I think Dale Earnhardt Jr. does for the sport sometimes goes unrecognized. And what he does is he supports this grassroots level racing. He owns late model teams. He owns an Xfinity team. He supports drivers to come up through the series. That's like Brad Keselowski and guys like him have come up through the junior motorsports ranks. We see Chase Elliott stuck on the outside just behind Peyton Sellers in the 99. Moving up on the inside of Chase Elliott's at 91 of William Byron. Chase is not making it easy, though. He fought him off from the outside, got a good run, instantly moves back to the bottom, takes that real estate. David Reagan just behind those two. You see Sellers there at the back in the 99 car. He had a bad, he had a, something happen on that restart. He lost some track position. He had worked his way back up. Now he's got to go to try and get that track position back, but he's running out of time. Yeah, we're closing in on 40 to go. You know, if you're outside the top five or six, I think your anxiety is starting to raise a little bit. You have to start making some moves if you think you're going to have a shot of winning this race. A little bit sideways there with C.E. Falk. That opened the door for the 99 of Peyton Sellers. A great move by Peyton Sellers. Drove straight off the corner, took the position, cleared him in one corner like Jeff was mentioned earlier. That is better for the tires. If you don't have to fight side by side, lap after lap, you are saving tire. How about this move? Matt Bowling in the 83, trying to get by Lee Pulliam for second. Still using a lot of patience. We'll see how long they last. He's right there at the quarter panel. It's, it's so it just pulls you in to want to just move him up the racetrack a little bit and complete the pass, but he's still giving him a lot of room. And it takes almost nothing. If you just barely lean, if you just barely touch the quarter panel of that five car, it shoots the five car up the racetrack, and you can take that spot. It's tempting. The only reason you don't is because you know that if the five gets behind you, he's going to give it back to you. So you have to understand that there's a time and a place. But if you give somebody something, you've got to be willing to take it back uh, when they give it to you. Kelly? I checked in with under that break. He said they wanted to free it up just a little bit. But he told me anybody inside the top 10 can win this thing with 50 laps to go. And I asked him if he was at all surprised by the speed out of that 17 car. He said, no way. I've raced against Timothy a lot of times. He knows that guy's good. And right now, he's going to have to worry a little bit more about the 83. Matt Bowling, who's behind him. Bowling, again, looking to the inside, trying to take second away. He is the five. I know he wanted to free his car up, but it looks like his roll in the middle decent. It's just having a hard time getting the power up, up off the corner. He's leaving that door open for Matt Bowling. And these cars are so difficult because we talked about earlier, they don't make a lot of power. If they don't roll the middle, you cannot go fast enough. Matt Bowling completes the pass on Lee Pulliam. Now let's see if he has anything for Timothy Peters. If he does, he'll be the first one tonight. We've yet to see Timothy Peters really challenged at all this evening. Josh Berry in the 88s, all over the back bumper now of that 12 of Austin Thaxton. He's working hard to get that. You just need a fender. You don't have to have enough inside Austin Thaxton that when you enter the corner, you have to believe he's going to give you the lane, and, and he just can't seem to get it. I mean, he's almost there, but that's that issue. He's going to have to push the issue if he wants to take that bottom lane with, with the run he's getting off the corner right here. It looks like he's done it, though. To the inside of the 12. Oh, he gets into the side of the 12, and around goes Austin Thaxton. Yeah, and Peyton Sellers got into it. That's, uh, you know, he lost those spots on that restart, and that, that, that loss of track position cost, cost him right there. And not happy, as he was trying to get by C.E. Falk. Austin Thaxton pointed the right direction again. He didn't have as much damage as some of the cars that came in late into this one. Take another look at how it happened. I mean, I know Austin Thaxton is fighting hard for position, but the 88 is clearly inside of him. He's all the way up to the left rear tire. It looks to me like Austin just tries to pinch the 88 down and runs out of real estate. And after the 12 goes around, you see Peyton Sellers has nowhere to go and gets into him. 88 looked like he moved up the track a little bit. Could that have been two guys going the opposite direction? I think that's after. I think the 88 holds his line, the 12 comes down. But then as Jeff knows as a driver, once you know that guy's spinning, you can either check up and be in it or turn right and go around it. And I think an experienced short track driver, he knew it was time to bail out, turn right, and go around it. Yeah, that's right. And we're getting late in the race. People are going to start being really aggressive. 
We're about to have another restart. Stay with us here on NBCSN. And welcome back to the Denny Hamlin Short Track Showdown from right here in South Boston Speedway. They're two by two once again as we're waiting for the restart. As we near the end of this race, I want to give you a recap as to how we got to this point. The most recent caution coming out at lap 192. It was for, looks like engine failure for Chase Elliott. Wasn't able to stay up to pace the rest of the field, so he pulled it into the garage. Yeah, the number six of Bobby McCarty, he got into an accident with Peyton Sellers. Heavy damage to both cars. You see the night done for both Bobby McCarty and Peyton Sellers. Poor Peyton has been in a few incidents tonight. I think this one might have ended tonight, though. Yep, he pulls into the pit area, and let's hear from him. He's standing by with Kelly Stavist. Coming a long night for Payne Sellers. First you spin out while battling for the lead. Now obviously a lot of damage there to the left side. What happened? You know, I don't know what happened there. The 12 car come across the 88 and they spun. Whatever happened, but we didn't have anywhere to go. So I hate it. Tore up a good car here. We were just coming to life with the new tires. The air pressures just came up and it was getting ready to be a race. Disappointing end for Payne Sellers. He was driving aggressively, but was looking good out on the racetrack. Oh, I think he had the car that win the race. I mean, he was fast from the beginning. Uh, he had a lot of problems. Uh, but honestly, I thought he had a really good shot to win. Again, the most recent caution coming out on lap 192. It was Chase Elliott that pulled it into the garage area. He's with Kelly. Chase, what was it that put you out of the race? I had a power steering line break, I, I guess. I'm not sure uh, why. We were racing pretty hard with whoever that was there for, uh, for fifth, I think. So... I thought we had a, had a really fast car, I think, Napa and everybody for coming on board and letting me come race. This was a lot of fun. Uh, obviously, this is all for, for Denny and his Denny Hamlin Foundation. So, all for a good cause. Wish we could have kept running. I thought we had a shot, but we'll, uh, we'll try again at Richmond. Under this most recent caution, Matt Bowling, who was running second, couldn't keep up with a cautious pace, and so he has to fall to the back of the field. Oh, I, things like that are so frustrating when you lose track position this late in the end of the race. But you know, Jeff, what I think is interesting, we've seen him going back and forth, and now here's Timothy Peter on old tires starting on the outside again. And like you said, it must be because of old tires versus new tires. He wants to be on the outside leaving the corner on old tires. Two laps to go. Green flag back in the air. Lee Pulliam with a great restart on the inside. He's going to take the lead away from Timothy Peters. And how about Josh Berry in the 88 making the move, trying to get on the inside. Oh, and a wreck right behind him. David Reagan, C.E. Falk, Nick Smith, all involved in this one. That's a big impact right there. We saw a wheel loose on the, on the racetrack. Uh, that's a really big wreck. This late in the race, we see this heavy damage on David Reagan's car. Wow, really heavy damage on Nick Smith's car. The whole right front suspension's missing. Take another look at what happened as they were entering one. You see Dalton Sargent here take Falk and David Reagan three wide, and there's just not room for three cars, and they all collect and go up the racetrack into the outside wall. A lot of damage to the 77 of David Reagan. He's out of the car and standing by with Kelly Stavist. David Reagan very nearly went the distance tonight. Handful of laps to go. You're battling in the top five. What happened? I think the, the 61, uh, I don't know his name, but just got a little too aggressive. And, you know, making it three wide on a green-white checkered here at a, at a 3 8 mile short track, just not a lot of room for everybody. So uh, that's a product of short track racing. And, and certainly young kids trying to, to develop their skills and learn. And that's a, a mistake that, that he, he probably wishes that he had back. I don't know if he got torn up or not, but tore up a lot of good cars. But, but had a lot of fun tonight. Uh, you know, got to thank CSX and Scuttle Tight, uh, Farmer Machine Company, uh, for putting this all together. Yeah, we passed a lot of cars. We were in the back at one point and uh, had a shot at a good top five. I don't know if we could have won, but uh, all in all, had a good time. And, and thanks to South Boston Speedway and Denny Hamlin for putting on this. Yeah, th David handled that really, really well. Obviously, you know, uh, these are young drivers being really aggressive, having a chance to race against a David Reagan means a great deal. And, you know, certainly a mistake there trying to make it three wide, but I thought David handled that really well. We had to overtime in our first attempt at a green-white checker. Lee Pulliam chooses the inside as the race leader. Well, I think he learned from the last restart when Timothy Peters gave him the inside and he took the lead over that that's where he wants to be. We'll be interested to see. You know, Timothy has started on the outside a couple times tonight, once successful, once unsuccessful. I think this uh, restart for a green-white checker and this small of a short track, this could be the race. I haven't mentioned a lot about Peyton Ryan, but running in the fourth position right now in the 23, just on the outside of the 88 of Josh Berry. They make up row number two. Lee Pulliam on the inside. Green flag back in the air. You see Timothy Peters instantly tries to pinch down Lee Pulliam and try to keep the momentum. 
He's kept him down one lane, but it, it's going to be really hard to get up next to him here in the middle of three and four. He's doing it as they work out of turn four. Lee Pulliam still with the lead, but Timothy Peters, as the white flag comes out, works to the inside of Pulliam, and they're side by side as they go down the backstretch. All the way through three and four. Pulliam on the inside. Pulliam goes around. Timothy Peters is going to win. Pulliam goes around after Josh Berry got in the back of him. Yeah, Josh got a little too aggressive there, you know, coming to get the checkered flag, and he just he just drove in the corner and got into the back of Pulliam. That started that whole wreck. How about that win? Timothy Peters working the outside on Lee Pulliam, and Pulliam gets the rear end lifted off the ground by Josh Berry, and Timothy Peters runs up on that checkered flag. Well, I mean, it might seem like he was lucky in that instance, but he's had a dominant car all night long, just lost the lead in one of the late restarts. He was in the right position there. Here's Lee Pulliam. Got to be very disappointed. Tore up race car. Looked like he had the position on the bottom there. Had the race one. Peyton Ryan also involved. Was running fourth on the, on the time of the accident on that last restart. A lot of good cars got taken up on the last lap. Take another look at what was happening. The 88, he just rushes back into the throttle. I know what he's trying to do there, but there has to be a, a place to go. And there wasn't a place to go. He just ran into the back of the five. And, and just flat out caused a big crash. And the 88 didn't tap him. He no. was to his fuel cell underneath him. You know, watch this. They're in the corner. Both of them get slow. But the 88 of Josh Berry, he's got to respect them a little bit. He just drives in the corner and drives up to his fuel cell and gets him gets Pulliam turning around. I mean, really, he misjudged the corner. The two leaders go in too deep, slide off the bottom. If the 88 would have went in a little more patient and rolled the bottom, there might have been a third lane there, but he chased him down into the corner, and the only place to go was through the, through the leader. He did chase him down there. He was trying to get into the leader, get him into the second-place guy, mess them both up. He just got him to it too hard. Timothy Peters wins the Denny Hamlin Short Track Showdown. Timothy Peters becomes the sixth different winner of the Denny Hamlin Short Track Showdown. He goes into victory lane. He had a little help getting there. Although he led 171 laps tonight, it was this incident that propelled him to the front. You see here, Lee Pulliam had the inside lane, and Josh Berry just, just gets too aggressive, runs into the back of Lee Pulliam, spinning him up the racetrack. You see here, Lee Pulliam very unhappy, probably going to find Josh Berry, wants to have a conversation about how that last lap went down. And a lot of people don't want him to make it to Josh Berry to have that conversation. Well, they're just shoving him to the front straight away so everybody can watch. That's, that's what that's about. <laughs> Timothy Peters sitting tight in his car until he's given the signal to climb out as the winner of the Denny Hamlin Short Track Showdown. And the celebration begins. He's been in this victory lane numerous times in his late model, but never in the Denny Hamlin Short Track Showdown. Kelly. Timothy Peters has won the Denny Hamlin Short Track Showdown. Timothy, you dominated most of the night, but at the end it looked like Lee might have had your number. What did you see there? Yeah, the chaos uh, on the last lap. Oh, it was a lot of chaos, but right here is what you're racing for. It don't matter if you're late model, truck racing, Xfinity, or Cup. When you get a paycheck and you're in victory lane, it was well worth it. it uh, I knew it was going to get antsy there with that 50 to go, with everybody getting fresh Hoosier tires, but uh, it, this, is, this is really cool. We ran three races, and we won two and finished second in one. So uh, let's go to Kansas May the 9th and do it again. <laughs> you have such a rich history at this track and a rich history with your crew chief. You guys won the track championship here together, so many races. What's it like to get back to Victory Lane here at South Boston? It's uh, it's huge to go back to Victory Lane here, but it's even more special to go to Victory Lane for Denny's short track race. You know, uh, I want to thank him for, for what he's doing for the, for the Saturday night racer, for these fans coming out here to South Boston tonight. Uh, before I get ahead of myself, the good Lord was, was with us tonight, and we're thinking about Steve Burns. He was riding shotgun with me. Such a great guy. Uh, every time I saw Steve, he went out of his way to say hello. So I want to say Burns strong. Uh, prayers were with his family, and uh, just a good man. Going too soon. Thank you, Timothy. Congratulations. Thanks. So the celebration will continue for Timothy Peters as he wins at South Boston Speedway once again as we take a look at our final results. William Byron ends up in second. Mark Wirtz, Tommy Lemons Jr., Tyler Ankrum up there in the top five. Yeah, we see here on the second page, Hermie Saller with a good run in 13th. Curtis Markham, Danny Hamlin, Spotter come home 14th. Josh Berry, after that uh, aggressive driving penalty, finishes 17th. 
You can see all these guys, they're disappointed. Jeb Burton, uh, he thought he had a good car. Myatt Snyder, he thought he had a good car. Uh, Chase Elliott had an engine problem, so all these guys are disappointed. Also disappointed, Denny Hamlin. He had engine issues, so he wasn't able to finish the race. Finishes up in the 31st position. You mentioned Josh Berry and his rough driving penalty. He's with Kelly. Josh, you were a part of that last lap action. What happened out there? I don't know. We were just, it was just hard racing with uh, Timothy and Lee, and, and you know, they were beating doors off each other. And, and uh, I just tried to go in there to fill the hole, and, you know, everything checked up, and I got into Lee, and it spun him. And I don't know. It's just, uh, it's a frustrating end to what was a good race for us. You know, we started in the back and got up to the front, and, um, I don't know, like I said, uh, at the end I was just trying to fill the hole. You never know what's going to happen at the end of these races. And they could have slipped up the track, and the fact that I was there could have won me the race. And, you know, I could have just took third too. But um, that's all in the past, and I just hate it for these guys. I just want to thank Speedco and Junior Motorsports, Dale Junior, everybody, Kelly, LW, all these people that let me race. And uh, South Boston Speedway, Denny Hamlin Foundation for putting this deal on. You know, it was a fun race. I just, it, it just, I wish... It wouldn't come down to green, white, checkered set in these. You know, these races, Martinsville, it is just, it always seems to happen like that. He sounds very dejected, obviously. You know, being put back, uh, quite a few positions for rough driving, not the way he wanted in. Well, no, and you know, you race with these guys every week. You want their respect. Obviously, he made a mistake. That wrecks on him, and he knows that. Uh, he, you can't blame him for being aggressive and trying to fill the hole, had both of them gone up, but you, know, you just can't run into the back of people like that. What a great event once again for Denny Hamlin in the Short Track Showdown. His foundation, again, helping kids and research for cystic fibrosis. It was a wild night on this four-tenths mile short track. It was. We had a lot of fast cars like Peyton Sellers here who had speed, but you had to make it all the way to the end, and a few cars did struggle with that. A lot of cars torn up, and like we talked about earlier, you know, it's it's very expensive. Uh, but you gotta love the fact these guys are out there racing hard. And again, this is supposed to be just a charity event, but it turned into a great race. Very, very passionate. Timothy Peters wins the Denny Hamlin Short Track Showdown.